Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Big Ticket Morning Show right here on the People Station V103, the ATL's number one for hip hop and RB, Miss Basketball. Yeah, yeah. Tyler Chronicles. Okay. Happy Friday, June 11th, yesterday, an epic moment in history. <laughs> And I do mean in history. History. We would normally be doing woulda, coulda, shoulda right now, but what you woulda. Coulda. Or shoulda. Done was been at Kasim Reed's birthday party. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Y'all missed out. He is live in studio this morning. Good morning, Mary. I mean, y'all should have let me in on that. I could have done the one of the shoulda, coulda parts. You know? If you want to now. I mean, we, we make it happen. We make it do what it do. We make I'm here it do. to work. <laughs> good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. Uh, epic happenstance last night at Mr. Gibson's uh, estate. Yes, yes. <laughs> Minus the yes. AC, but it's yes. all right. Yes. I'm still hot from last yeah, night. A lot of pressure on that system. You know, we thought there were going to be 150 people there and 400 showed I knew up. It. So there was a real pressure on that system. And then the weather pulled us in. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. The whole the, yeah. backyard, pool area, all of that set up. And then we had a little rain, so we pulled that. Yeah, it rained sideways for a minute. It did. Yeah, so... Rain you know, sideways for a minute. D nice in the being building. A blessing, though. It, it was nice. Yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he's like a brother to me. He just destroyed it when we went oh in the basement. Oh my god! Though. I mean, my goodness. It was dope. If you, I mean, if you haven't seen him do his thing in person, mm-hmm. and so um, he wanted to be there with me from the very beginning. So we were talking, and and uh, it was just a really special moment. I was going candidly after my daughter introduced me. So it was, <laughs> That did that happen? So did that happen? I was shaky. I had to put it together. You know how we do. I didn't even steal my spine, but after that. Well, happy special. birthday again, sir. Great, oh, great event you. last night. Um, Man, congratulations on this studio. I mean, I mean look, the, they, they ain't going to let us what? keep it, but. They need to let us keep it. Is, I mean, this, this is, is nice, first right? Class. Yes. I want to stay here. Yeah, yeah. We, like, we like this. We like this. Just like this. Uh, the news of the year. Uh, you back in this thing, huh? He's back. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, for me it's really a call of the heart. I think that um, the future of our city um, is in a difficult patch right now, and I, I hope to offer myself to try to, to solve some of the immediate challenges that I see facing our city. And so after a prayerful thought and uh, spending time talking to my family and people that I love the most, uh, last night I decided uh, to offer myself for service and just look for, look forward to having a, a conversation over the next five months with the people of Atlanta. And so um, V103 is the appropriate place to start that conversation Amen. because True. I think y'all play such an important part in the soul of the city. Well, we are, we're glad that you were here. Um, what was the deciding factor to make you say, you know what, the city needs me, I'm going to do it, I'm going to run. Was there a certain event or did something happen? You know, I have a different perspective. I mean, I, I'm not walking into this in terms of the city needing me. Mm-hmm. I think that the skill set I have, certainly as it re- relates to reducing crime, when I left office, crime was at 40-year lows. Um, we had $200 million in cash reserves, AA-plus credit from Standard & Poor's, um, people moving into the city in dynamic ways. Uh, I, I think that that's been frayed a bit. Mm-hmm. I think Atlanta is a tapestry. And right now, um, you know, that tapestry is really at risk. And so I decided to offer myself a mm-hmm. service. I don't really think it's need. Um, there are a variety of candidates who are seeking the office of mayor. And over the next five months, um, the people of Atlanta always sort it out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is very true. I'll sort it yes, out. Indeed. Yes, indeed. Good morning. This is uh, Tyler Chronicles. And, um, hey, you know, Tyler. A, how are you? Hey. I'm well, man. How you doing today? Happy yeah, birthday well, as well. I'm sorry Thank I didn't get so to much. come. <laughs> <laughs> you missed yeah, the sweat box, sweat bro. Box. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like it was better than where I was. I'm listening. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but but uh, on a little serious note, man, yes. I'm um, pretty anxious about, uh, you know, as an Atlanta resident, about the Ray Sharp Brooks case and, you know, how it may end up turning out. So I wanted to know, you know, what would be your opinion or, or something that you think the city could do to kind of get ready for however that turns out? Well, I think that, first of all, we need to to follow the process and make sure that the case is handled diligently Mm -hmm. and appropriately. Uh, And obviously, I have my own feelings uh, about that individual's guilt. Mm. Um, But right now, I think that what we have to make sure is that the process is always followed. And I think when the process follows, we'll end up with a just result. That's what I'm talking about. Listen, uh, Kasim Reed is here. Again, announcing uh, his return to politics, if you will. Yes. Uh, running for the mayor of Atlanta once again. 
uh, historic uh, waters to be swimming in. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you know, I've been spending time uh, talking to Maynard Jackson III mm -hmm. uh, and his wonderful wife, Wendy. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've really just been giving me terrific advice because the only other person in the history of the city of Atlanta to serve three terms was Maynard Jackson. So I really was talking to Maynard III about what his father was feeling when he made that decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, felt, uh, he felt that the city needed him at that time. Mm. And his, his advice and counsel to me over the last month to six weeks uh, has just been invaluable because, you know, he was a young man and a child at that time. Mm -hmm. So he's the person that had to, had to lose the time of his dad right. choosing to go back in service. Um, and then uh, everyone around me has just been very close and supportive. You know, my mom had real unreadinesses mm -hmm. about this. Um, but, you know, my daughter, Maria Kristen, has been, <laughs> you know, writing up the campaign sign. <laughs> <laughs> so that made it a little easy. She was like, Dad, we're doing this. Oh, Let's I go. love we're doing it. This, Dad. Nice. I love it. Very nice. Cassine Reed is here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Don't go too far. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation and have some, some intricate, no, I ain't going to say intricate. We have some tough questions for you, man. All right. Uh, I'm ready to go. And if you're open to it, we'd love to have people call in and ask questions. You can do that at 404-741-WVEE. But our conversation will continue with Kasim Reed when we return after the three things you need to know from Maria Boynton. Welcome back to the Big Ticker Morning Show on the People Station V103, the ATL's number one for hip-hop and R&B, Miss Basketball. That's me. Tyler Chronicles. Yes, sir. And Kasim Reed joining us live in studio. Studio this morning, uh, a privilege to have you here sitting after you have announced to the world that you are returning to the uh, politics, running for mayor once again of our great city of Atlanta. Thank you for joining us this morning, sir. Oh, always glad to be with you and the VFV. Amen, right. amen. I promised uh, our listeners an opportunity to talk to you as well because yeah. it is absolutely about every single resident within these ATL streets mm -hmm. to uh, determine if this is the right person for our city. On line one, we have a, uh, Aisha from ATL. Good morning, sis. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing today? We hey. good, we good. You're doing good. amazing, Aisha. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Ask your question. So my question is, what? are we going to do about affordable housing in the city of Atlanta and why we are building $500,000 home in Bankhead when the average person makes less than $32,000 a year? Mm. Good question. Um, that's a good question. What I think we're going to do about affordable housing is put the city's resources and strength behind it. So, for mm -hmm. example, right now we have a 10% requirement on the books uh, when you use land that is either city owned or city subsidized or an extension of the city uh, mm -hmm. and also with APS and also with the Atlanta Housing Authority. Um, but what we need to do is fully enforce that. And so the city okay. has large amounts of property that we can use uh -huh. to leverage uh -huh. affordable housing. Uh, there are a number of initiatives that are taking place right now. We need to expand the size of them, and then we need mm -hmm. to hold people accountable to make sure that the affordability standards are put in place. In other words, you'll have an affordability standard, mm -hmm. but those, you, you, those units aren't made available to the public and marketed to the public. And if people don't come okay. and use them, then they then become oh. market rate. Mm. So that is one of the things that we can do in a dynamic way uh, to make sure that Atlanta remains a place for everybody. And that folks who were a part of Bankhead all of the time get to stay in Bankhead. But the city has okay. to enforce that. Okay, I would like to see that because I have lived in East Atlanta all my life. And I see yes. people getting pushed out day in and day out. So, you know, I'm fortunate that my dad is still going to to stay in the city of Atlanta. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, he's about to retire. So my thing is property taxes keep on going up. Yes. So we just need to have a resource that my people and everyone in the city of Atlanta can still afford to stay in the city of Atlanta. We'll have to move outside of the city of Atlanta. And I would appreciate that if that seems to happen. No, thank you for your comment. One of the things that we launched that we have to make bigger is called an anti-displacement initiative because when new people move into communities, it causes the property tax to go up. Mm -hmm. So we actually raised tens of millions of dollars to help people pay those property taxes. Mm -hmm. So if you were an individual who may be older or a senior citizen and a young person moves in to you, next to you and renovates their facility, then we should be able to help pay 
the increase in your property taxes mm. as a part of an anti-displacement effort. And we should raise that money from the private sector, mm -hmm. which we started doing uh, in Atlanta during the time I was in office. Thank you for your call, Aisha. Let's go to line Thank two. Thank you, Aisha. Rodney in Atlanta. Good morning, sir. Hi, this is Rodney from the city of Atlanta. Okay, hey, Rodney. Rodney. I have a question for Mayor Reed. Yes, sir. A former Mayor Reed, future Mayor Reed. Yes, <laughs> I think you still get to call me Mayor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, living on the southwest side of Atlanta. Yes. Where are we going to see the big businesses that come to make a let southwest as big as Buckhead and make it prosperous? Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I live in southwest Atlanta right near you. And w one of the things we did is you have to use the power of the office of mayor to direct investment. So off of Fulton Industrial in Atlanta is a massive um, UPS facility, one mm -hmm. of the largest UPS facility with jobs that are very good, that pay very good wages. Um, that was actually put there because I had a conversation with David Abney, who was then the CEO of UPS, right. and we directed a project that was several hundred million dollars into the southwest area. I say that because that's an example of the power of the office of mayor. And so we understand how one wonderful a community Southwest Atlanta is. But when you're in that office, um, you know, if we had made a, deci a different decision or if UPS had made a different decision, um, that multi-million dollar sorting facility, which employs thousands of individuals near Southwest Atlanta would have gone somewhere else. Mm. We need to multiply that effort. And any time there are new businesses that are coming into the city of Atlanta, we need to make sure all of our communities are presented and mm -hmm. top of mind. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Rodney. Appreciate Thank your you, call Rodney. this morning, sir. Bye-bye. Sitting with Mayor Kasim Reed uh, this morning on V103. We're talking um, state of the city, where we're going with it. Um, uh, some things that have come across everyone's mind, I'm just going to ask your opinion yeah, on and how you go. intend to deal with uh, if reelected. Let's start with the water boys. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the entrepreneurial spirit, yeah. but they are super aggressive at a light. Yes. Where do we, what do we do with them before something tragic happens? Well, I feel that any person that has um, the get up and go to stand at an intersection ought to be able to, <laughs> to be in a job. Right. Yeah. And so what I would do is I would turn to public and private philanthropy uh, and raise money for an initiative that actually trains those young people so that they will be able to earn in partnership with the city through philanthropy. Uh, I would encourage uh, leadership programs uh, such as those that are available at Junior Achievement, which happens to be on Northside, Northside Drive. Okay. And if there aren't institutions that want to take that training on mm -hmm. and help make these young men real entrepreneurs that have an opportunity to earn as much as they do at intersections, then I think we ought to make that happen, and I think we ought to award that get up and go. Mm, but yeah. we will not tolerate people being at our intersections, mm. period, full stop. Okay. So we have to present a big-hearted solution, and I think the people of Atlanta will yeah. support a big-hearted solution. I mean, one of the things that the Water Boys could do is to provide um, water to every single recreation center in the city of Atlanta, which yeah. are all going to be opened if I'm fortunate enough to be mayor until 7 o'clock. Yes. Seven days a week for okay. our young people. I opened 33 of them mm -hmm. um, when I was mayor last time. I opened every pool in the city of Atlanta. All of those facilities have some form of, of water for refreshment. Right. So I think that we ought to help mold these young men into entrepreneurs, but you can't have both. Right. Mm -hmm. So we will raise private capital. We will put public funds into initiatives to create an entrepreneurial path mm -hmm. that pays them as much as they do um, selling water in intersections but I just think that the the challenge of having people walk up on cars um, who m may be uncomfortable mm -hmm. or nervous or not used to dealing in that environment um, is something that we're going to take on so the bottom line is if I'm fortunate enough to be mayor that practice will end mm -hmm. but we will have an alternative that I believe the public will support and that will award any young person uh, who has the tenacity to get up and stand in an intersection. I've done it campaigning, <laughs> and it is not easy. <laughs> so if you're standing in an intersection, um, you definitely have some get up and go. But um, I don't like the, the, the situation that it puts drivers in, and I don't think it can stand. But I think Atlanta has to respond um, with a big heart 
and concrete solutions that are backed up by the public and the private. And I know our city will step up and do it. Kasim Reed here with the Big Ticket Morning Show right here on V103. Hey, Tig, real quick. I'm sorry. Can I add something to that? Hopefully the Hawks, Hawks, Braves, and Falcons were listening to that and, mm. you know, can probably – join in and help with you know with the water boys in the vending situation yeah i mean you make my point the point is is we ought to treat these young people like serious mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. we ought to engage them and their families and we ought to provide an opportunity to provide a similar income that they earn right um uh, when they're on the street but being on the street is no longer going to be an option uh, if i'm fortunate enough to serve in that role uh mayor since i've gotten here which is 2013 at this point uh, the landscape of the city, the, the energy of the city is is different. Yes. Uh, and that's neither a bad or a good thing. It's just mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Um, there are more uh, transplants, uh, you know, shout out to the Grady babies. Yeah. Uh, but amongst, as we emerge from this pandemic, as we emerge from, well, we still haven't really emerged from it, as we're still dealing with the social situations surrounding Black Lives Matter, police yes. brutality, yes. and the ever morphing residency of the city, which, uh, like, how do you plan on dealing with all of that? It's going to be a lot on your plate, yeah. a lot of tough decisions to be made. And how, do, how, did, how will Mayor Kasim Reed deal with that new energy, that, that difference in what the city was, is now from what it was when you left? Well, I think you start off by listening and full engagement. And by full engagement, I mean make yourself available to listen to all of the new people and all of the old people. Um, but we have to understand that we've been promoting the city of Atlanta as the city where anything's or anything is possible, where mm -hmm. you bring and build your dreams. And people believed us. Yep. And so as a result, our metro has grown to 7 million people, and Atlanta uh, had a significant population increase. So. You know, we can't have these two messages um, that that we are an amazing place where you can bring and build your dreams, but stop coming. Yeah. And so what we have to do is we have to engage the new folks who are coming into our city. And then I think we need to launch a series of big initiatives um, fo focused on human needs in the city of Atlanta. Seeing Reed is here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, lots of conversation sent around. Uh, corruption in your previous administration. Yes. Um, there will be people who will not be here for you being mayor again, centered around that sentiment alone. Yes. Uh, for those of people who are not necessarily on your team right now or on the fence, give them, give them reason to believe in Kasim Reed right now. Well, my reason would be that I love the city of Atlanta and I've done this job before and I certainly have a deep understanding of the mistakes that have been made. But what I would ask the people of Atlanta to do is to look at the whole of my service. Um, during the whole of my service, uh, the city of Atlanta achieved a number of things that it had not achieved before. It was the safest that it had been. It attracted business at a rate that it had not attracted it before. Um, it had a credit credit rating that it had not had before. We reformed p the pension system. We had record tourism. So I would ask folks to view all of my portfolio and all of the body of work that I have and let them know that I've certainly um, learned a very deep and personal lesson about how important it will be to make sure that every single individual in our administration meets the highest ethical standards. So, for example, no person who has had a personal bankruptcy or a business bankruptcy will be able to serve uh, in my administration. Um, we will have quarterly briefings on ethics for the cabinet in my administration. We will have a senior ethics council uh, in the office of mayor in my administration. Every single direct report to the mayor of Atlanta will provide all of their income tax returns okay. every single year just to give people confidence that the mistakes that are made in my last administration um, will not move forward. And I would do everything in my power not to take the city through that. But that said, uh, I would just remind folks um, that during that time, um, we built the motion picture and film industry from a $400 million industry to a $9.5 billion industry mm -hmm. with 34,000 jobs when I walked out of office. 
We won the Super Bowl, College Football Hall of Fame, and the NCAA well, we, Final Four. We didn't four. win the Super Bowl, sir. No, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm talking about hosting. hosting. That, was a, <laughs> that was very painful, we, we what you it. just we did to us. I know, I but you're saying hosted. that. I wanted to be clear. <laughs> know, but we were the only, we were sad. We were the only <laughs> city in America that hosted all of those events right. back to back. We had record tourism, record hotel <laughs> occupancy, record job growth. And so what I'm going to put forward is the totality of my record and where we were. And to be even more clear, Tigger, Mm. um, folks who live in Atlanta right now know what it felt like Mm -hmm. when I was mayor, and they know what it feels like right now. And they know that when I was mayor, we had a level of safety and security that is not not currently present. When I was mayor, when you were pumping your gas, you were not fearful or less fearful of being stuck up Mm. When I was mayor, I focused on crime in a maniacal fashion Mm. to the point where seven out of eight years, less than 100 people lost their lives in our city. Mm -hmm. And it only occurred on one occasion. And I think that right now people are more concerned about their own lives and their own public safety. And and they want to make sure that the person who has this job first takes care of the first obligation of being mayor. And that's to make sure that you are safe and secure and that you have an economy that is vibrant so that you have a good job so that you could support your family. And both of those things occurred during my eight years in office. Mayor Kasim Reed here on the Big Ticket Morning Show on the People Station V103. Yeah, so listen, you're about to, you know, um, embark on your third term, right? So what is the first thing, if you're elected, what is the first thing you're going to do? The first thing you're going to combat? Well, the first thing that I want to do is focus on reestablishing our sense of community and our public safety f- uh, framework. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to create a process and recruit the very best police chief in the United States of America. Uh, during my term, I had a chief named George Turner okay. who delivered phenomenal results as a police chief and put crime at 40 years low, at 40 year lows. And when you lower crime in that fa- in fashion, business and investment comes in at record levels. So we went from $400 million in new construction to $5 billion in new construction by the last time that I was in office. And so what we have to take on right now is making people feel safe enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm going to create an environment where you will not have metal detectors on our shopping malls. Come on now. I'm going to create an environment that when you are at gas stations and at public places, you feel less fear than you feel right now. Everybody knows exactly how we feel and the level of anxiety that exists in our city right now. And it is going to take a unified, coordinated, intense, passionate effort Mm -hmm. to deal with that in a way that is humane and consistent with who we are as Atlantans, but also restores the public safety framework. The biggest risk to the city right now is the effort of citizens in Buckhead who, because they feel mm. a great deal of fear right. are working to create their own city. Yeah. Um, if that were to happen in November of 22, it would be catastrophic. So I don't want people to think that we're just talking about rich people. Yeah. Mm. If Buckhead separates, that revenue for the APS school system goes away. Wow. So if you care about that boy or girl in Thomasville, Atlanta, you should care about Buckhead wanting to become their own city because that's between 35 and 38 percent of wow. all of the revenue. Mm. That is very serious mm. right now. We also have to restore our relationship with the state of Georgia. Uh, one of the things that, that, that I did when I was in office was had one of the best relationships with Republican Governor Nathan Deal mm-hmm. than any mayor in America, certainly of opposite parties, yeah. because that relationship overall is helpful in bringing jobs that allow you to go and live the life that you want to live. We live in polarizing times, uh, Mayor. Um, I wish you luck in your <laughs> election process, and should you win, I wish, I wish you luck. the Hawks luck. Man. <laughs> yeah, we wish the Hawks luck. <laughs> are you, mean, are you I mean, going to the game? I wish the Hawks luck. Are I'm you, going. Uh, <laughs> no question. I'm going to be, be there. in the building tonight. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate the time this morning. Again, uh, happy belated birthday. Yesterday was an epic happenstance. Yes. Thank you. Um, this city, uh, this city, deserves the best of the best. Yeah, and. You are absolutely uh, putting your name out there uh, to be considered 
as the best of the best mm-hmm. to return respectfully for a third respectfully. <laughs> yes, respectfully. Okay. mayorship. I want your vote. Yes. <laughs> no question. Um, guar- nah, there's no guarantees. Um, just what is the one thing you can say to anyone listening to encourage them that you won't let them down? What I would say is, is that um, I've lived my life the last three years, and I certainly know and understand the challenges that um, the city went through as a result of mistakes that were made in my administration. Mm. And I will assemble the best team possible to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But more important than that, I'm going to work to make sure those things don't happen again every single day. Yeah. I also want folks to remember um, – that we accomplished some amazing things over those eight years. And the Atlanta that we know and love, where dreams were possible and where this was the place to bring and build your dream, can be restored. Um, But first we've got to restore this tapestry that is the city of Atlanta that is fraying and that is being pulled apart. And it's gonna be my number one priority. And I'm gonna work at it every single day with all of my heart. Mayor Cassine Reed, ladies and gentlemen, thank oh, you, sir. We got a tear over here. <laughs> <laughs> it was so heartfelt. Big ticket morning show on the People Station. You got jokes three all day long. No, I, no, I felt that in my Taking spirit. Taking this abuse, man. <laughs> this is not abuse. Tigger just <laughs> ripped my side out by bringing up the Falcons. I mean, he, just, <laughs> he knows I was sitting You there. said we won the Super Bowl. We <laughs> did we, not. I we, just won, we won the ability to host <laughs> that, the Super okay, Bowl. Okay, thank let, you. But I have let to, me fix that before listen, Twitter lights me up. we in the media. We check it. We fact check it. Check it in real time, man. Super Bowl, <laughs> College Football Hall of Fame, <laughs> Final Four, back to back to back. Okay. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Say that. Would have had the Would have had the All Star for the Major League yeah. Baseball this year. But yeah, anyway, we, we get, get back to that. that. Uh-huh. We, we ain't got that kind of time. <laughs> yeah. Seven fifty eight. Thank you again, Mayor Reed. Congratulations. No, I'm in studio, y'all. Yeah. yeah. You know How about that? Up, right. You know what's coming up, right? I don't know what's what's what are you one of those date bitch. nights you have. <laughs> you know oh what? God! What is this? Don't, don't Shoot Don't your shot, you on man. Date night? Ain't no, nothing but not air on balls on shoot your shot. Night. Night. It is not nothing <laughs> but air balls. What is this thing with this date night? Thing? What? I'm going to give somebody a shot. You what taking you somebody do? from date night to the game? I am not. You, you <laughs> exactly. done date night at somebody in the <laughs> <office>. <laughs> Eight o'clock, more than one amazing date night, night next. the Hawks, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, 103. I can't stand y'all.